Well, hey all, welcome back. If age spots, brown patches, uneven skin tone, you know hyperpigmentation is becoming a real problem for you and you just can't tolerate tretinoin or retinol creams, I have the prescription for you how to deal with these in short order in today's video. All right, so we know that hyperpigmentation is a very common condition. Almost everybody has it to some degree at some point in their age. And it's frustrating to treat because usually it's a very slow process to get rid of brown patches, age spots, dark areas, uneven skin tone, whatever you want to call it or whatever particular version of hyperpigmentation you're dealing with. Frustrating. And we're going to talk about how to deal with that today, as I said, in short order. Now, if you're new to me and the channel, I'm Chris. I'm a skincare expert. I've been doing skincare for 34 years. Yeah, I know, a long time. And my job is to help you find skincare that will work for you, not into your wallet, and not do you more harm than good. So if that's the kind of content that you've been looking for here on YouTube, please be sure and subscribe. Hit that little notification bell so that you know when my new videos are up every week. All right, so we know that hyperpigmentation is a collection of pigment in the skin and it occurs over time usually from hormonal changes sometimes those of us who have had acne like me in the past have marks left behind our red marks dark marks scarring it also is a function of our skin as we get older as we've accumulated a lot of sun damage which is why sunscreen is so important but that's a video for another time in fact, there are already a lot of videos on my channel about sunscreen. But today, let's talk about the ingredients that are in your skincare products that can really help with this issue and give you back that bright, beautiful, even skin tone that you're looking for. Now, I always point out here that when it comes to skincare, especially topicals, it takes time and sometimes a good deal of it in order to see results that you might expect or be looking for. And unfortunately, in the skincare world, promises are made in such a way, a vague way, that we're led to have expectations to see things like immediate improvements. Immediate improvements in things like hyperpigmentation usually require some in-office type of therapy like a skin peel or laser therapy. But if you can be patient, there are topical ingredients that will work very well for you. And on today, I'm not going to be talking about retinol because that is a active that not everybody can tolerate. These are skincare ingredients, mostly skincare acids, that are mild to skin, can give you good results over time. And I'm going to list them in a kind of a fun way today from in order of the fastest working to the slowest but yet deepest working. So let's dive in and get to it. First on the list is vitamin C, either in a serum or a cream, and it is going to be the quickest worker because it primarily focuses on the very surface of your skin. Now, we all know vitamin C is full of antioxidants, but it also can help minimize the amount of the enzymes that your skin produces or your skin cells produce that can lead to this hyperpigmentation issue. It also helps brighten the overall skin and it is very good for skin's cellular health. In fact, a 15% concentration of L-ascorbic acid in a cream can give you about a 55% reduction in hyperpigmentation on the skin within one to two months. And again, remember I said things take time, but really it takes a lifetime for some of these spots to develop. So when you think about you can get them faded down about 55, 60% in a couple of months without any sort of surgery or treatment in an office of a dermatologist, this is really a good deal. And again, vitamin C is just really good for your skin. Now it comes in a couple of forms. The first is a much stronger, I don't wanna say caustic, but it is, a, it is an acid. So I guess it is caustic. That is L-ascorbic acid. And that's what we typically see in high-end creams and serums would be that 15% L-ascorbic acid. Now with L-ascorbic acid, you can go as low as 5% in your product as a strength and you're still gonna get some results and sometimes that helps people with sensitive skin tolerate l acid creams better. However, there is also the much milder, more stable sodium ascorbyl phosphate. Sometimes it's listed in product labels as magnesium ascorbyl phosphate, but that is a very stable form of vitamin C that is going to work albeit slower, but still give you the same kind of results over time. And it is really great for sensitive skin types. I've used both, both are very effective. 
I choose to use the stronger L-ascorbic acid because I tolerate it well, but if you have sensitive skin, that gives you that option. Now, the other great thing about vitamin C serums and creams is they do generally play well with other skincare ingredients. Usually you will find them in multitasking serums that do more than one thing uh, for your skin. They can be applied daily in your routine. And again, you should see some good results in a month or two. Next up on the list is kojic acid, which is another ingredient that we often find in spot correctors, spot treatment serums. It is made from a fungus. It's actually a fermented form of the fungus. So this acid is really great in being able to inhibit, again, those enzymes that produce those pockets of melanin that end up being those patches and brown spots on your skin. Does a really, really good job. Been around for a pretty long time in skincare and been used for a long time for spot treatments and melasma. It does work well. But here is one thing that you really need to keep in mind and consider when you're going to use kojic acid as that you do a spot test because since it is made from a fungus, some people are sensitive to that and can have a reaction. The easy way to do a spot test is to simply apply the product to the inside of your elbow, which is skin that's very similar in its nature as sensitivity to your neck and face. Leave it on like you would in a skincare routine all day long, rinse it off. They give it a 48 hour period. So 24 hours that you wear it and then watch the next day, the next 24 hours to make sure no reactions, dryness, redness, or itchiness shows up. If it doesn't, you're good to go. And like vitamin C, kojic acid is full of antioxidants and in general is very good for your skin. And you should see results about the same time frame as you would vitamin C one to two months. All right, the next one is one that you've probably already heard about and that is niacinamide. And it is showing up more and more in skincare formulas because of its ability to reduce inflammation, redness, and calm the skin. Now niacinamide is a form of vitamin B3 niacin, right, it's in the name, and it is able to actually interrupt the cell pigmentation process, leading to a brighter overall complexion. So that, along with the fact that it's very calming in nature, makes this a really great product for people with sensitive skin, people who have had acne or rosacea. It will help reduce that inflammation and redness and prevent further dark hyperpigmentation marks as those lesions heal and also helps prevent breakouts. Now, the one thing you need to understand about niacin is it can be a little bit drying for some folks. So sometimes you need to use a water-based oil-free moisturizer along with it or after it. But again, we are seeing it added to more and more skincare products and you can use niacinamide up to twice a day in your skincare routine. You should begin to see the benefits of niacinamide right away when it comes to calming inflammation and redness. And that overall brighter complexion usually shows up around two months. Then we have another skin-friendly acid that can do a whole lot for hyperpigmentation, and that's azelaic acid. And this is an acid that's an organic acid that we get from grains. It, like niacinamide, has anti-inflammatory properties, and I can attest to this myself because it even works on my mosquito bites. And sometimes I feel like I moved to Florida just to be a meal for the mosquitoes here. They're really bad. But anyway, I have an allergy to mosquito bites, and azelaic acid calms my skin right away. So the calming and redness reduction properties of azelaic acid are immediate, but over time it does also help inhibit that pigmentation process and it's been extremely effective for people who have melasma. You can see some really great benefits within a couple of months. Just be sure that you look for formulations that are 10% above azelaic acid. All right, now we come to another skincare acid ingredient that is getting a lot of buzz right now in the skincare community. In fact, it's been trending in Google Trends and other places, and that would be Arbutin, our alpha Arbutin. And Arbutin is a really interesting compound because it is derived from the dried leaves of blueberries, bearberries, and pear tree leaves. And it's being considered and compared to scientifically to like a natural form of hydroquinone. And hydroquinone is that skincare acid that actually bleaches out skin. Now there's been a lot of controversy over that ingredient because people have misused it. It's kind of been mishandled in the skincare world as to how much of a strength you should use. It can burn skin in some individuals. So while hydroquinone is a really good skincare acid in general. It's one of those things that, you know, when people do the wrong things with it, we have issues like the FDA saying it shouldn't be on the shelves. However, 
alpha arbutin has kind of become the replacement or the golden child and the studies are still going on, but it does look like alpha arbutin can work better than things like kojic acid and even glycolic acid and vitamin C serums in the long run for hyperpigmentation problems because it's able to be absorbed a little bit more deeply and the skin reacts more favorably to the process that reduces the amount of pigment that's produced in your skin. Did you get all that? Now it is gentle and well tolerated across skin types. However, because it's made from those organic compounds of blueberries, pear tree leaves and bear berries. Those are things that some people can have allergic reactions to in the plant world. It's a really good idea to do that patch test just to make sure before you put it on your face. And our alpha arbutin can be applied up to two times a day. If you tolerate it well, just know that it's going to take two to three months before you really see that major improvement, but it may take your skin beyond improvement that you would get with those other skincare acids. Now, of course, there are other ingredients out there in skincare that can help with hyperpigmentation, glycolic acid, lactic acid, salicylic acid that help speed up cellular turnover. And then the king of all of those, which would be retinol. But again, this video is dedicated to the skincare acids that can give you good results without the reaction that some people have with retinol and tretinoin. Not everybody can tolerate it, so this gives you some options, I hope. So if today's video was helpful to you in figuring out what you might be able to use to reduce and prevent hyperpigmentation moving forward, please give the video a like, share it out. It really helps the channel be found by other people who really need to solve their skincare problems. And of course, I really appreciate you doing that. Also, let me know in the comments below what, if any of these ingredients you have tried or are using and what kind of results you're getting, I'd really like to know. Thank you guys so much for watching and supporting the channel. I know you have a choice here on YouTube. I really appreciate you. Thank you so much. Stay beautiful and I will see you over on the next video. Got a skincare question you want answered? Just type Chris Gibson and the topic in the YouTube search bar and the video will come up.